Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, today we will talk about cloud native uh, and why it is important. Um, we will also touch upon different themes in organizations with cloud native applications. Uh, and then I'll also discuss uh, how you can influence in the cloud native space as a product manager. Uh, but before we dive in a little bit about myself, uh, my name is Sunana Singh. Uh, I am from India. I have about 14 years of experience in the tech industry uh, in companies like Microsoft, Cisco, Marvel. Um, um, right now, I'm part of the Azure observability team, but prior to that, I was also part of other teams like Azure data platforms and cybersecurity. Uh, very different areas, but uh, very exciting, each of them. Um, I, you can find me on LinkedIn. I've put my LinkedIn URL uh, over there. So in case there are any questions or you want to reach out after the session, uh, please do uh, connect on uh, LinkedIn. So let's start. Uh, what is cloud native? Um, and I'll pause here for a few seconds um, for you all to read this cute little story. So cloud native is um, much more than just being on the cloud, right? Cloud native systems take uh, the full advantage of the cloud service model. For example, it takes advantage of containers, microservices, and other cloud technologies to deliver high availability, reliable, and scalable solutions at speed. Now, let me tell you why uh, this is important, right? Let's look at users today, users of tech products like you and me. Uh, what do we need? Uh, we need innovative features that adds value or solves our problems. Uh, for example, let's say I'm a customer of a bank. Uh, and I want to access banking solutions anytime, anywhere through the bank's software applications. Now, as a user, I want the banking software to meet all my banking needs. I want those needs to be served fast. And if there's an issue, I want to resolve that fast, right? Uh, I also want the banking application to be available anytime that I need, uh, right? If there's a downtime, then most likely as a customer, I'll be frustrated and consider other bank. Uh, so this is where users are today. Uh, and let's see what companies are doing about it and what do they care about. Um, so as an enterprise, companies care about creating products that customers love. Uh, they want to respond to customer issues and also industry trends uh, uh, fast so that they can reach market fast. Uh, they want zero downtime because, of course, they want their apps, app applications to be available for their users uh, anytime that the users need. Uh, they want to scale uh, and maintain uh, the scale as and when the dem demand grows. Uh, and security is, again, another top of mind concern for uh, enterprises, um, enterprise data as well as customers' data. And, of course, uh, they want to control costs. Now, as we go along, I'll talk about how a cloud native can help enterprises achieve all of this, all of the good things that you see on screen, uh, speed, scale, zero downtime, security, resiliency, agility, uh, just by applying cloud native principles and processes. So cloud native is an evolving space and cloud native computing foundation or CNCF is one of the thought leaders who provide guidance on technologies and tools that organizations can use uh, to bring to build cloud native applications and how CNCF has defined uh, cloud native is uh, cloud native technologies empower organizations to build and run scalable applications in modern dynamic environments, such as public, private, and hybrid clouds. These techniques enable loosely coupled systems that are resilient, manageable, and observable. Combined with robust automation, they allow engineers to make high impact frequent changes or changes frequently and predictably with minimum toil. So this is what how CNCF has defined um, cloud native. Uh, and there are many companies who have uh, adopted cloud native and they are creating great products. I've listed some of them, Netflix, Uber, Pinterest. We all love uh, these products. Uh, and as you can see, uh, uh, 
you know, these companies have thousands of microservices running behind the scenes uh, and changes are deployed about hundreds of times a day uh, to ensure they deliver a great customer experience. And we all uh, love these apps. Now let's look at some of the key pillars of um, um, cloud native. Uh, right. Uh, and here in this screen, you see some of the key pillars that I have mentioned, and I'll touch upon each of them briefly. Uh, DevOps and CI CD, which is continuous integration, continuous delivery. So the patterns and practices that enable faster, more reliable releases to deliver value to the business are collectively known as DevOps. Uh, what this mean is it means being able to release software rapidly. Um, and it gives fast moving companies a huge market advantage when it comes to you know, deploying products. Uh, DevOps include things like source control, task management, uh, CI CD pipelines with testing, uh, which automates the deployment of their changes in a safe uh, and staged manner in all their environments. Microservices. Uh, microservices is an architecture where a software is composed of small, uh, loosely coupled systems uh, that communicate with each other, uh, maybe through well-defined APIs. Uh, each of these systems are independent and run by small self-contained teams. Now, microservices architectures make applications faster to develop and deploy and easier to scale just because you know, they are loosely coupled, independent, small systems. Now, containers, containers are the core of cloud native. Um, whenever somebody talks about cloud native, most likely containers will be uh, a part of their you know, uh, conversation. Uh, now, the CNCF places microservices containerization as the first step in their guidance for enterprises beginning their cloud native journey. Uh, containers are just packages that enable applications to run in any environment. That is, container, containers virtualize all the necessary tools and runtime, runtime files uh, so that your application can run anywhere. Now, while containers help you run your application, or orchestration is what lets you manage them, especially important when you're running these containers at scale. Backing services. Uh, cloud native systems are powered by many other resources such as data stores, uh, messaging, uh, messaging queues, authentication, caching, etc. Uh, these services are known as backing services. Uh, observable, so observability is the ability to observe or monitor an application and respond to failures or proactively prevent failures or downtime by monitoring metrics and signals from the application. Very important when, when we talk about uh, cloud, cloud native. Now, uh, let's also talk about some of the patterns. Uh, so when we think of cloud native applications, there are several stages, uh, like for example, the architecture of the application, uh, delivery, deployment, and then you know infrastructure management. So I've already discussed some of the areas here, but when we think of software architecture, it is very important for enterprises to design their apps, keeping in mind the modern design practices. Uh, so one of the popular, very widely ex accepted methodology is the 12 factor app uh, defined by Heroku. Uh, I'll talk about this in the uh, next slide, so I'll not uh, go deep, but I'll come back to 12 factor apps in the next slide. Also working at large scale, enterprises should also embrace modern data management practices to manage huge workloads and data to scale their applications. Um, backing services, I've already discussed about these. Uh, when it comes to um, delivery, CI, CD, and you know, test-driven test -driven deployment and development is, is key. Also having a separate build and release processes, but still keeping those different environments uh, very similar to each other, uh, which is the parity between environments, and being able to safely deploy changes in all of these environments in a staged manner is, is you know, key to delivery or deployment of changes. Now, coming to infrastructure, I think the first thing is immutable uh, infrastructure. And what this means is servers are not something that can be touched or changed, uh, like if a server fails. 
uh, then or something gets wrong then you know you just completely remove that and another and spin up another one and all all of this should be done automatically in runtime uh, so that is what we mean by immutable infrastructure auto scale uh, your infrast or your servers should be configured to scale up or down automatically based on the load uh, observability being able to monitor the health of your services and observability is not just being able to monitor your infra uh, but also applications with deep telemetry uh, and being able to diagnose an issue uh, is is very important um, it's also important to design for resilience uh, because infra infrastructure or your servers will fail right at some point uh, but how do you ensure that that does not impact your uh, service or you know stop your uh, applications api based communication a big part is thinking about um, apis to interact with infrastructure like you know how do you scale um, uh, your servers how do you remove a server how do you configure the server for example add um, additional storage or um, um, you know um, so all, all all of this you know is should be based on api based communication and that is uh, key when we talk about uh, cloud native uh, last is the last in the infrastructure piece is the chaos engineering uh, so by synthesizing failures or other scenarios real time scenarios uh, and seeing how the system reacts and responds um, and you know this should be done in production so that it's as real as your actual customer environment uh, so uh, so that you know you see how the uh, system is resilient and reacts to failures the last point uh, the one at the bottom is about teams um, and the cloud native is more about uh, you know enterprise culture that needs to be imbibed by all the teams uh, teams need to be empowered a very very customer centric uh, and learning learning needs to be a core uh, of it all and that is when enterprises can truly be uh, cloud native um i talked about the 12 factor uh, apps um, let's go a little bit deeper of course you know each of these is very detailed you know i can uh, it will take us uh, you know, many hours to talk about each of uh, you know the whole entirety of 12 factor apps uh, so i'll briefly touch upon these uh, 12 factors uh, so 12 factor app is a widely accepted methodology it was defined by developers at heroku uh, but was first presented by adam uh, wiggins uh, you can find more details in uh, 12factor.net and i have listed a quick overview of the 12 factors here uh, so i'll go through each of them one by one very quickly a single code base for each microservice uh, which is stored in its own repository uh, and deployed to multiple environments like QA, your staging, beta, production, etc. Uh, each microservice isolates and packages its own dependencies and the dependencies are declared you know, uh, upfront. Uh, configuration information is externalized through a configuration management tool so that you know your code does not have any config uh, related information. Uh, backing services, your data stores, message brokers, etc., should be decoupled and addressable via, let's say, an URL. Um, each release must enforce a strict separation across build, release, and run stages. Each microservice should execute in its own process, isolated from the running services, and they should be stateless. Um, each microservice should be self contained. Uh, with its infrastructure and functionality exposed on its own port uh, doing so provides isolation from other microservices uh, when capacity needs to increase say scale out horizontally uh, which means you know concurrency is, is is critical service instances should be disposable uh, keep parity between your environments for example your test and production um, should be uh, same run administrative and uh, treat logs like your event streams uh, run administrative and management tasks such as data cleanup or uh, you know computing analytics uh, as a one off process now 
as a pm okay there was that was a lot about cloud native and hopefully um, hopefully you know uh, you were able to grab some of the patterns and pillars of how enterprises can be cloud native uh, but let's say you're a product manager in uh, in uh, in in, a, in, a, in an enterprise which creates cloud native applications uh, how can you influence as a pm and i've put down some of my some of the points that i feel can is still are still relevant and you can create a lot of impact as a pm uh, the first one is you know you being the voice of the customer uh, so as a pm you are the customer voice you represent the customer so being customer centric is very very uh, important uh, and as I discussed about cloud native, the spectrum is very broad uh, in the sense that you could be a PM in one of the backend services, for example, uh, API layer or the messaging infrastructure or the data pipeline. Uh, but ultimately, everything that we do impacts the end user customer experience. So very important to keep that in mind, like how or whatever you're working on is how, how is that going to impact the end customer experience and not just end customer customers customer experience right a cloud native applications also shorten the feedback loop because you deploy fast you you know you get to market fast but that also means how do you take how do you leverage that shorter feedback loop and get quick customer feedback um, and apply that into your uh, you know product management journey Next is product strategy. Uh, as a PM, uh, being able to identify opportunities for growth is something that, that is going to help you. It's something that you can focus on. Defining goals and metrics. So as a PM, uh, you define the goals uh, and metrics, the business metrics, uh, and you're responsible for not only successfully delivering the features but also to measure the measure the impact on the goals uh, by tracking key metrics so that is also something that's you know very uh, key managing stakeholders this is this i feel is uh, very uh, crucial uh, because in enterprises with uh, cloud native apps uh, there can be so many teams that you will uh, partner partner with both internally and externally right so you'll play a pivotal role in communicating shared goals uh, or they, or maybe you know align on dependencies with internal teams internal partners maybe uh, maybe the teams which are uh, part of you know other components in the whole cloud native app um, uh, ecosystem so even externally you have to work with your customers partners or for example you know you're building a community for your customers so as a pm i think you can do much much more when it comes to managing uh, different stakeholders and finally a good prioritization uh, way to you know uh, 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 prioritize what features you're going to focus on your team is going to fo focus on making the right trade-offs uh, will ensure um, success not only for for you but also for the entire product and team so as a pm uh, i think you can create huge huge impact uh, on enterprises who are building cloud native applications uh, so that was all i had for today um, let me know if there are any questions uh, and thank you for uh, listening